For every single one of those 45 degree angles, what did the sine ratio simplify to? There you go. What did the sine ratio simplify to? Every time. Square root of 2 over 2. Okay. Uh, so did the cosine, didn't it? And what was the tangent? 1. Every time, it didn't matter what the side lengths were, the sine, cosine, and tangent ratios were always the same thing. Now you may say, well, how can that happen when the triangles are different sizes? It's because it's the ratio. It's the ratio of one side to another side. So if your angle is the same measurement, that ratio is going to simplify to the same thing every time. Now, <clears throat> On the back was where more of the 30, 30 degrees and 60 degrees were, but the 30 degrees for sine always simplified to, did we get that one? What did the sine of 30 degrees always simplify to? Uh, I think that one's supposed to be one half. Yeah, one half. The cosine was always the square root of 3 over 2 and then the tangent that would be the square root of 3 over 3 for 30 degrees <coughs> excuse me and then for 60 degrees uh, the sine of 60 degrees was the square root of 3 over 2 the cosine was 1 half that relationship flip-flops from 30 degrees, and the tangent was just the square root of 3. Well, think about it, why these two things are related to each other, because you, you have examples right in front of you. Those 30, 60, 90 triangles, one angle is 30 degrees, the other angle is 60 degrees. So you have the same side lengths, it's just depending on which angle you're talking about, will determine which side's the opposite side and which side's the adjacent side. Okay, so if, you, if your 30 degrees is up at the top and you're talking about the opposite, that's your side on the bottom, okay? Uh, but then if you switch your perspective to the 60 degrees, then the side on the bottom is now the adjacent side. So that's why the sine of 30 degrees is equivalent to the cosine of 60 degrees. So again, it doesn't matter the size of the triangle, these ratios are always going to hold true. Now, let's go back to our degrees versus radians thing again, because we're going to use that today. Uh, 45 degrees is pi over 4 radians. Okay, pi over 4 radians. You need to know that. That 45 degrees is equivalent to pi over 4 radians. Always. Okay. 60 degree, or excuse me, 30 degrees is pi over 6, and 60 degrees is pi over 3. You just need to know that. Okay, this is called the unit circle, and it is very, very helpful. Um, it, we use it a lot in calculus. We can say free calculus, the trig uh, portion of the community college, you will need to know this uh, because it just, it tells us a lot of stuff, okay, about trig and those values. So, let's start by labeling some stuff here. First of all, it is called the unit circle because it has a radius of one, okay? It is a circle that is centered at the origin and it has a radius of one. We'll get to the, the point things in a second, but I wanna try and approach this from a geometric perspective as much as possible. Because if you understand the geometric pattern and relationship, you don't have to look at it from the perspective of memorizing the entire circle. Okay? If you understand the first quadrant, the other three quadrants are just related to that first one. Okay? Because of reflections and things like that. So if you learn the first quadrant, the others come from that. <clears throat> so let's start, first of all, if this circle has a radius of 1, this point over here on the positive x-axis 
is going to have a coordinate of 1, 0. Its x coordinate is 1, its y coordinate is 0, and it's on the x axis. The point up at the top on the positive y axis, that would have a coordinate of 0, 1. I'm going to keep going counterclockwise because that's how we measure angles. Okay, so negative x axis, that would be the point negative 1, 0. And then down at the bottom, negative y axis, that would be the point 0, negative 1. Its x coordinate is 0, its y coordinate is negative 1. Now let's talk really quickly about what these angle measurements are. Okay, so back to where I started on the positive x-axis, well that would be 0 degrees, it's also considered 0 radians, okay, um, the point up at the top, positive y-axis, hopefully you can tell that that's a 90 degree angle, okay, but you also need to be familiar with the fact that that is pi over 2 radians. Okay, pi over 2 radians. The negative x-axis is a 180 degree angle, and we know that that is pi radians. If we go 90 more degrees, then we are at 270 degrees, which is 3 pi over 2. And if we go all the way around, we're at 360 degrees or 2 pi radians. Now, we talked the other day about coterminal angles. We could keep going around this circle, but we're going to stop at 360 degrees. We're going to stop at 2 pi. But you do need to realize that the positive x-axis is your beginning point, so it's 0, and it's your ending point, so it's 360 degrees as well. All right, so let's <clears throat> look, as you can see, in each quadrant, there are three segments, okay? Those three segments represent, guess what, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees. So I'm going to try and keep these colors coordinated as much as possible. This first angle right here would be 30 degrees, and remember we just said that that is pi over 6, we need to be familiar with that. 30 degrees or pi over 6. Well, let's look at this geometrically for a second. Look at the x coordinate of this point versus its y coordinate. Which one is bigger? The x coordinate or the y coordinate of this point? The x. We go over 3 over 2, 1 half. The x coordinate is the square root of 3 over 2, and the y coordinate is 1 half. The next angle is 45 degrees. It is halfway through that quadrant. It is pi over 4 radians. Oh, and this is why I've got the color pencil. Sorry, forgot to mention that. If you want to color code it, I've got the color pencils there at your group and you can share them. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, what do you kind of notice about this point? It's halfway in this quadrant. If you look at its x coordinate versus its y coordinate, they're equal. Okay, they're equal. And based on what we know about 45 degrees, the sine and the cosine are the same. Square root 2 over 2 for both. And then if we look at that third segment, that is our 60 degree angle, or pi over 3, its x coordinate is less than its y coordinate. It has more of a vertical component than it is a horizontal component. So this is the relationship from 30 degrees flip-flops. Its y coordinate, or excuse me, its x coordinate is the square, or 
one half, its y coordinate is the square root of 3 over 2. Okay, so if we look back at the relationship that we just established, which angle, or excuse me, um, for 30 degrees, the square root of 3 over 2 was which one, sine or cosine? For 30 degrees, was that sine or cosine? Okay, we'll keep doing that again. For 30 degrees, the square root of 3 over 2, is that the sine value or the cosine value? Cosine. Um, we'll get 60 degrees. One half, was that the sine value or the cosine value? Cosine. So our point here, the x coordinate is equivalent to the cosine of the angle, and the y coordinate is equivalent to the sine of the angle. Okay, so pretty much the purpose of the unit circle is to help you to establish these relationships so that if I ask you what is the sine of 30 degrees, then you should be able to visualize your unit circle here and say that it's one half. Always. Okay? If I ask you what's the cosine of 90 degrees, it's zero. Okay? I work on the unit circle 90 degrees, the x coordinate is zero. The cosine of 90 degrees is zero. Okay? Um, on your paper, I've got some more blanks there. The special angles, which one are right here? Pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3. Pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3. We're going to see this again in a second, why these are considered our special, quote unquote, special angles. Now that we have the first quadrant established, what's the relationship between all these points in the first quadrant and the points that will be in the second quadrant? Is there a relationship? They're mirrored, okay? They are mirrored. If we flip these points over the y-axis, we're going to land right on what I have drawn here in the second quadrant. So the only difference, they have the exact same coordinates, the only difference is what? What's the difference between this point and this point right here? The x is negative. The y is still positive. So let's fill in our second quadrant according to that. We'll fill in the angles here in a minute. Uh, but let's just start with the coordinates. So this point right over here would be the negative square root 3 over 2, 1 half. This one would be negative square root 2 over 2, positive square root 2 over 2. And this one would be negative 1 half, positive square root 3 over 2. <clears throat> and you can still look at it the same way, okay? Um, this one down here at the bottom of the second quadrant has more of a horizontal component. It is a vertical component. The square root of 3 over 2, just so that you have an idea of what that is, <coughs> excuse me, um, in terms of a decimal value, the square root of 3 over 2 is approximately 0.866. That is greater than 1 half. It's less than 1, but it's greater than 1 half. So square root of 32, 0.866. The square root of 2 over 2 is 0.707. Okay, so you get a better idea of what those are. Okay, so the relationships are like right there. All right, now let's fill in the angles right here. Okay, this is a pattern too. Okay, um, we have 30 degrees right here. And can you see that 30 degrees exists right here? But we're measuring from the positive x-axis. So this little piece right here, and I don't want you to draw this part on your picture. Do not draw this part on your picture. If this is 30 degrees, then what is the measure from the positive x-axis to that point? 180 minus 30. Okay, 180 minus 30. So this piece right here is 150 degrees. Okay, I do want you to write that down. Okay, that segment right there is 150 degrees, and 
it is five 